Hi everyone, welcome back. If you are new, welcome to my channel. I'm Jody, and I am excited for today's video because if you've never seen this before, you are in for a treat. We are gonna do a, you guessed it, Friday face-off where I take two highly rated, highly beloved products that are in the same category and I do a side-by-side -side comparison so we can see which one is really worth your money because it does what it says it's going to do or are they both or are neither of them worth your money? And I have thoughts about that for today. So it's also important to know that I have combination skin, I'm oily in the T-zone, and then I'm dry everywhere else. So both of these products, I know you're wondering which ones they are, they are for the face. I'll get to them in just a second. So we will see how both of these products wear on oily skin as well as dry skin. And I will apply a powder bronzer and some cream blush. So whatever skin type combo you have, this crazy face of mine, I've got you covered. What are the products we're going to review today in Friday Face Off? The new CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence Foundation. Key to remember here, it has the word foundation in the title. That will become very important through this review. On this side, I am going to put the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy Plus Smooth Foundation. So $21. $10.99, how well do these work on mature combination skin and for how long? That's right, we are doing a wear test. So if you are ready to go through the application process and see how these hold up on my skin and possibly yours, let's get right to it. All right, you guys, so I cannot get on foundation fast enough because I normally do my foundation first and I'm realizing that when I do my eyes first and then foundation, I'm a little bit like eyebrow blindness, meaning I don't realize how bold my brows are when I have foundation on, but when I don't, woo, here they are. It's like Groucho Marx leading the Macy's Day Parade. Okay, so CoverGirl, this one's a bit confusing to me, so let's get into this. This is called the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence Foundation. It has the word foundation in the title. This sells for $21 for one ounce. It comes in eight shades. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out if the reason this only comes in eight shades is because in the marketing material on the CoverGirl website, as well as the Ulta website, it said that this can also be used as a primer. I don't know many products that can work as a primer and or foundation. So there's foundation in the title, but it says it can work as a primer. It's more of a serum and it only comes in eight shades. So it's a bit of a confusing product for me. Does it have to fit in a nice little box for it to work? No, if it works, it works. But for those that are new to makeup, you may not even know what to do with this. And I'm not sure I do either, but we're gonna work it out together. It does say it's light coverage and it is a natural radiant finish. So. It says on the Ulta website, this has over 800 reviews. It's a fairly new product, so that's understandable. And it's about a four star review overall. One of the things I love about the Ulta website, and this is not an ad for Ulta, and neither of these products are sponsored. And by the time we get to this review, they probably wouldn't sponsor it because I don't know how they're gonna turn out. At the bottom of the Ulta website for each product, it shares with you how many people would recommend this product based on percentages and 80% of the people that reviewed this said they would recommend it to a friend or someone else. Does it say friend? Um, yes, to a friend. 80% would recommend this product to a friend. Both of these products that we're gonna review today are water-based. CoverGirl is cruelty-free. It's a liquid foundation with micro droplets in it, and a couple of reviews said that it had a scent to it. I don't have any I don't get any scent to it at all. But it says that you're supposed to break this up with your finger to draw, to break up those micro droplets. I reviewed one similar to this from Chanel last year when it first came out. And I was struggling to get that one to work as well. So we're just gonna break all that up. Not a fan of having to put stuff like that on the back of my hands. Now the only thing I have on my face already is sunscreen. And I have oily T-zone area. So this is all oily on my forehead and then my cheeks are more dry. So I'm glad about that because we'll be able to see how both of these products hold up on oily and more dry skin without a primer and without setting powder. I am gonna use a powder bronzer as well as a cream blush so we can really see how these hold up under different conditions. For now, let's just see how this works 
at all to apply. You know, Friday face-offs are really meant to show us if products are worth their money, and I'm not sure so far of this one because I don't even really know what it's supposed to do. So I am just dapping it into my skin. It's giving a nice um, glow to my skin. What's with all the glowy products lately that are marketed for more mature women? That Charlotte Tilbury foundation I reviewed a couple weeks ago, absolutely not a fan of. This is, mm, if you've got flawless skin or you just want to give a glow to your skin, this does have a really pretty glow, but it applies pretty uneven. I'm not sold on this just right out of the gate because of the eight shades. I mean, I think when you've got eight shades, you just, it's an international product. I just think that is, I don't even know. If it had some magical AI technology that matches your skin tone and that you only need eight shades, but I didn't see that in any of the marketing materials, so I'm gonna go with, that's a hard no. Okay, so I don't know what this product is. So far, I'm so not impressed with it. I don't know what you'd use this for. I definitely don't think I would use this as a primer, unless you're looking for a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. It could maybe do that, because you can see how glowy that is, but I feel like the texture in my skin, my pores through here, are when the light's hitting them are really on display. And I feel like it's accentuating these little lines through here as well. But we're gonna, we're gonna still go with the rest of the process and see how this works. So let's go to the other side, hope for better results. This is the Fit Me Dewy Plus Smooth Foundation by Maybelline. This also comes in a matte formula. This is a medium coverage and says to have a natural radiant foundation or finish as well. So we shall see. I do like that I don't have to put this on the back of my hand first. I can just put it right straight away onto my face. This comes in 24 shades, sells for $10.99 and has 4.2 stars on the Ulta website, over 10,000 reviews, which in fairness, this has been out much longer than the CoverGirl, so I can understand why there'd be so many more reviews to it. And 78% of people said that they would recommend this foundation to a friend. Looking at how it's going on, it definitely is a uh, medium coverage. If you can compare between the light coverage and medium coverage, it definitely is covering the imperfections in my skin a little bit better. Um, and rightfully so, it's a medium coverage. It also feels the same in terms of the dewiness, and it does say it's dewy plus smooth, so that would make sense. I don't know what the smooth part is because it's not smoothing out my face, but it should cost a whole lot more than $10.99 if it did smooth my face. It goes on nice and smooth. Maybe that's what they're saying. It's easy to blend. I don't feel like it's patchy anywhere. Um, yeah, that was really easy to apply. So here's what we look like on both sides so far. The Maybelline side says that it is fragrance free. Yeah, it doesn't have a scent to me at all. And again, this one didn't either. A final step I've been doing with my foundation as of the last couple months is I take a big fluffy powder brush with no powder on it, and I just go in and sort of buff out my foundation. I've loved the way this finishes the look. And because it picks up any of the excess oils from the foundation, I find that it helps the foundation last longer and I just love the way it looks. So we're gonna do that quickly on both sides and just give them a fair shot to see how they work. All right, now we're gonna apply a little bit of concealer. I'm using the House Labs by Lady Gaga. You guys know this Triclone Concealer is one of my favorites. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. And we're gonna go in with a little bit of powder bronzer. And I'm gonna use this on my face in the oily parts. So for those of you that have oily skin and might wanna apply a powder on top of these foundations, we're gonna see how that works with this little experiment on my forehead. For those of you with dry skin and wanna know if you can apply powder on top of these foundations, we're gonna know that answer too because we're applying it on top of the dry parts of my face, which is my cheeks. Just give it a little bit of a kiss of sun. Where's my concealer brush? Dab that around. I will link all these products down below if you are curious as to what I'm using. 
if you're trying to figure out one product to buy in this experiment, I would definitely say it's this Angie Cotton Flashy Concealer Brush. This is the A506. I mean, this is a brush that is gone viral for all the right reasons. Is there a wrong reason to go viral? Yes, but this brush is one of the good things that comes from sharing good information on social media. Another thing about sharing on social media, you guys, I was having a conversation with a girlfriend the other day. I'm just gonna keep getting ready with you. Now I'm gonna apply some cream blush. This is the cream blush by Pat McGrath. This is in Peach Lotus. We're gonna apply that right on top of the dry parts of my face. I was having a conversation with a girlfriend the other day about like our dream job. And I, this is my dream job. I love what I do. But if you could have like another dream, I remember last year watching The Golden Bachelor, some of you did, we talked about it here on the channel. And it was, a bachelor show like ABC does for older women and, and the man Gary. I think he was in his 70s. I loved that show. I loved it because it just supported finding love at an older age bracket and all the beauty that can be had from that. But I think there should be a golden bachelorette. Stick with me. I don't want to be on the show because I am happily married, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful husband. So I don't want to be on the show. But the hostess. I am manifesting, I want to be the host, if there's a golden bachelorette, I want to be the hostess. I'm a girl's girl, I would give her the lowdown on if there's any shenanigans happening with these men, and I think that'd be a great job. So, if you know anybody that works at ABC, have them call your girl, here I am. So lastly, I'm going to add a little bit of powder highlight, and for that I'm just going to use a puffy puff. <laughs> Puffy puff, very technical term. And I like using this type of a, a application for my highlighter because I don't, I have pretty bold cheekbones already. And if I use a blush or a pencil, it tends to be more streaky, where this is a little bit more of a glow from within blurred application to the cheek and doesn't look as stripy or streaky, if that makes sense. I just like the way that gives me a final look. And we'll just go right through here. And there we go. We're gonna check in at about the four hour mark and then the eight hour mark because comments on both of these, some of the negative comments was that they didn't last very long on the face. One of the questions that came from the Maybelline side was somebody asked if it oxidizes and a Maybelline rep came on to the comments and said it does not oxidize. For those of you that are new to makeup and you're not sure what oxidation means, you might have had foundations in the past where you applied it and it looked really pretty and then in a couple minutes to an hour it looks a little bit more orange or warm, that's because once it hits the oxygen and the air, it changes color a little bit and oxidizes. And you don't see that as much with foundations anymore. That used to happen a lot, but I think the formulations have gotten so much better that you don't really see many foundations oxidize. And so for a $10, $10.99 foundation to not oxidize, it just leads the question. You shouldn't have to put up with a foundation that oxidizes. If Maybelline can do it at $10, then definitely your high-end ones should not oxidize either. But if you've struggled with, why does my foundation look crazy? It looked good this morning. That could be why maybe the formula oxidizes once it hits the air. So to recap, $21, eight shades, light coverage, natural radiant finish, cruelty free. On the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy Plus Smooth side, it sells for $10.99, comes in 24 shades, is medium coverage, and has a natural radiant finish. We've got oily areas, we've got dry areas, we've got powder on both the oily and the dry, as well as cream products on top of, so we can see how these layer. As I said earlier, we're gonna check in at the four hour mark, some of the comments said that they don't last very long. So I don't wanna go eight hours and try to backtrack and figure out where did these start to go wrong. We're gonna check in at four hours and see how they're holding up. So here's the final look upon application. And here's what they look like at the four hour mark. It is now 101 and, it's my cute husband. It is now 101 and um, yeah, I thought I would do a check-in because We've got some oily patches up here, if you remember, and then we put the powder bronzer on top. This side, which is the CoverGirl side, is wearing really um, blotchy. Because this formula is such a serum -y type of a formula, I thought we might have trouble with it as an oily skin area, and that's exactly what we see. So if you have oily skin, I don't think that this Essence 
foundation, primer, slash whatever is a good option because it's already shiny. And if you were to set it with a powder to try to make it last longer and not be as runny, you're just gonna run into you know patchy, blotchy areas. In terms of where it is more dry and I put that cream blush on top of it, it still looks nice. I'm not sure who this product is really meant for though, unless you have really flawless looking skin and you just want a little bit of a glow. But I think there are tinted moisturizers on the market that would do the same thing that are in that around that $20 price point. Um, I also think that that True Match Nude by L'Oreal is a really good option if you've got normal to dry skin and you want just a little bit of coverage and a little bit of healthy glow. The coverage is so light that this product is meant for someone that just wants, I don't know, just a little bit of that glow from within. And if that's what you're looking for, this would probably be nice. I don't feel like it's settled into fine lines and wrinkles at the four hour mark. Um, and I don't really think I would need to reapply it. It's just not for me because I want a little more coverage than what this is offering. Maybelline side, I think it's still holding up well. It is getting a little shiny also as the day is going on. The coverage is still good. It isn't settling into fine lines and wrinkles. And where I am more oily, it's still wearing fine with the powder. So for those of you that have oily skin, I think you'd be fine adding a powder to it. And on the areas where I have more dry skin, that cream blush seems to still be holding on. I didn't apply a lot, so it's, it's probably not really obvious to you guys, but in the mirror here, um, both sides of the blush are still holding their own. Uh, and then there's that highlight powder on top of the dry skin for these which is also looking fine on both sides. I'm happy with how both of these products are holding up at the four hour mark. Again, this essence just probably isn't ideal for oily skin. So let's see what happens in another four hours. Well, we have made it eight and a half hours with these foundations. I don't know if we can even call this CoverGirl One foundation, but let's get to that in a second. It is 92 degrees outside. And as I was editing other videos, I'm like, why am I in a sweatshirt? I don't need the AC to be that high that I need to have a sweatshirt on. So let's tone the AC back to normal and enjoy the sun as we have it. So that's what I have done since I saw you guys last. All right, so final thoughts on these two products. On ter in terms of the Maybelline side, it still is a good medium coverage. If you like a nice healthy glow and it is a very pretty natural looking glow to your skin, this one by Maybelline, and I have it in color 120, is very impressive. It held up through heat. It held up in the powder area where I'm more oily. It held up where I am more dry and put powder and cream on top of it. And I have a little bit of pigmentation showing through, but it's a medium coverage. And that looks about as good as it did eight and a half hours ago. It did not settle into fine lines and wrinkles. It still looks really pretty overall. I am impressed. So for those of you that are friends of mine that have asked me recently, what's an affordable foundation that doesn't look like I have a ton of foundation, I would have to say this is definitely one. This wears very much like the True Match Nude by L'Oreal. So if you find that that is too emollient for your skin and it does have that hyaluronic acid, so it could very well be just a little too slippery if you have oily to normal skin, this would be a really good alternative for you. The coverage is very similar, the finish is very similar, and the wear time is also very similar. So now let's talk about the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence Foundation. First of all, it's that's a lot of words. You guys know how I feel about a lot of words in a title. This is an interesting product, and I said that from the beginning, and nothing through this eight-hour demonstration has changed my mind. I, I was really trying to figure out, well, let's, let's just see how it wears. I shared with you how oily and patchy this section is on my oily skin, so not a fan of this for more oily skin. It didn't wear evenly the second half of the day, the after that four hour mark, I felt like it just started to wear more uneven. And that makes sense because as the day goes on, your skin produces more oil. It just doesn't seem to work well with oily skin. And it doesn't seem to work well with product layering, which is interesting considering this says it can also be a primer. Now, if you are looking for a primer, this, you know, this might be a nice primer, but again, I don't think it works well with oily skin. So, 
yeah, I'm not, I'm struggling for the ideal market for this. And maybe the ideal market is somebody that has really nice skin that just wants a little bit of an enhanced look. Or maybe you've got more dull skin and you want to wear a medium foundation, but you want that glow from within. This could be a primer underneath, you get the glow and then you can put your foundation on over it. I just don't know that it would work well with oily skin at all based on how it performed with that powder on top of it. So it, there's, a, there's a market for it. I just think you have to make sure that it's right for your specific skin type. And the eight shades just really throws me off. I guess if you're gonna put this on as a primer, then the shade range doesn't become as much of an issue as long as the undertones of this Essence Foundation works well with your own skin's undertones and that of your foundation. So again, there is a market for it. It's not my favorite. It's not even in my top 100 favorites. So, sorry, CoverGirl. I'm usually a big fan of yours but I don't know what that product's all about. So do we have a winner in today's Friday face-off? Not only is the Maybelline Fit Me the clear winner here, I'm really impressed with how well this worked. I didn't expect it to work as well as it did, and that will be in my rotation as I look for more medium coverage, especially this time of the year going into fall. Winter, I tend to go a little bit heavier coverage, but for a good medium coverage foundation with a nice, pretty natural finish, I think this is definitely a go-to because my skin looks great after eight and a half hours. That does it for me today, you guys. Stay tuned in just a couple weeks for another Friday face-off. I do them every other Friday, but there's always videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. Be sure to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok where I give you the latest in beauty news, including some of the latest releases in beauty products. Until next time, have a great rest of your day, and I will see you real soon. Bye-bye.